For the first time, we've made our way to the state of Virginia, specifically the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area, and we're gonna be fishing the lower Chesapeake Bay with father and son duo, Tom and Trey Ritter of Marv Outdoors. Virginia Beach is known for its rich history in Norfolk, home to the largest naval base in the world. I'm here to explore those things, but I'm also here to target two different species on the Chesapeake Bay. Some of the largest redfish in the United States are caught in this area, and fish over 45 inches are commonplace. The cobia fishery in the Chesapeake Bay area is also legendary. For years I've heard stories of the sight fishing that takes place on these waters, and I can't wait to get after them. Never gets old. Every morning, huh? Eight Every morning, eight o'clock. So we're working the poles here on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel mainly because as these fish leave the bay, they stage on structure. So we'll be checking some of the channel marker cans and blind casting to them. But on the tunnel, as we have a, not a ripping current, but a medium to, to slack current, right. they'll sit right on the back side and we can see them on the pole. Kind of nosed up into the current? Right up into the current on the pole. Um, it's kind of a starting point for everybody. You come out of the inlet, check the poles, Go to some water where you have seen fish, where we've seen some rays, or where there's bait. So any kind of structure out here on this bay they're going to get on? Yes. There he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. God, I got him. I got him that time. God, what a thump, man. He whacked that thing. Cool bite. Just look at the white lines on that fish. So they all have to be netted, which is different than Florida. Correct. Look at that, the dots on them. It looks like a little, a little leopard. You just want a big net in this area. Yeah. That's why you come to Virginia Beach. Right there. Yeah, we got uh, we got some intel that there's some fish on this bridge piling, so it's always good to know people. Oh, I see him! I see him! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my! Oh my god! Oh. Oh. He's out. Uh. Easy now. He's out. Oh. How cool was that? That was insane. How cool was that? That was insane. <laughs> 
Yeah, man, there was a pack of them in there. There he is, right here. He's right here. That's a stud right there. That's a solid fish. Woo! Good job, brother. That thing is sick. And there was a pack with them. Oh my god. They were hungry. Oh my god. What a hey. Yeah, I didn't I didn't crazy. even know what to uh kind of what to expect. Like even seeing them there. And they were just nosed along the piling. I know. So that's it. That's the targeted species right there. I mean, on the pilings, real visual, which is super cool to sit, you know. They're on all this structure, but to see them like that, a whole pack of them, this is a solid one, right? For your Absolutely. Absolutely. Good slot fish. And you did a great job. See how he ran back to that hole and you had to bustle him off. You did a great job. Yeah, you did. You better lock it down and go. That's it. 65 <laughs> pounds. Missouri <laughs> braid locked down. <laughs> That's right. I got bit. I got bit. Oh, I got bit. I marked that fish too. I marked him. I saw him right there on the finder. That is awesome. <laughs> oh. There we go. Yes. Big old red. So funny. I just saw him on a machine. I'm like, huh. Red. Oh, it's a little pup. That's, That's a, a little nice one? fish. That's a little one. Oh my god, I don't want to see a big one. <laughs> He's a feisty little guy, though. That's a good one for me. That's a little one. That's a little one. That's, That's a little, little one. one. All right, all right, well, how big are the big ones? 48 to 50 inches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, uh, an average fish, an average big drum here is about 48 to 50 inches. That's a pretty fish, though. Yeah, that one's been eating well. Absolutely. So cool that we were going through there, and I literally marked him on the Ray Marine, and then, doom, 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 little tug, 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 bump, bouncing the bunker across the bottom, a little knocker rig. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. He's got a remora on him, too. Look at that. that. That's how you know he's a good one. He's got a remora <laughs> on him when a fish has a fish on him. Look at that. You can tell he's been eating that crustaceans with that blue tail. Yeah. We were, I mean, we're just, you know, a couple hundred yards over here cobia fishing. You said, you know what? Along these rocks, get to be some redfish. Yep. You don't have to go far. It's such a variety of fish here. But they're all in here probably eating these bunker, eating the crab, eating everything that's flushing through. There's so much bait. Exactly. God, what a fishery. How cool is that? And this is the baby one. This is just, just over slot for us. Our slot's 18 to 26. Um, but most of the, the, our large class of redfish this time, this time of year and throughout the summer is anything over 40 inches. All right, cool. Let's let that one get back in the water. George Gods. I'm going to talk to you today about the correct way to pack your cooler for a day on the water. You know, it seems pretty basic. You're going to throw ice in your cooler, all your stuff in there, and head out for a day on the water. But really, there's kind of a little bit of a science behind it to keep everything as cold as possible. 
You want to make sure you have the right ratio of ice to contents. The best is two-thirds ice to one-third contents in your cooler. What type of ice you use is also important. Crushed, cubed. On a smaller cooler like this, what I like to do is start out with Yeti blocks on the bottom. We'll freeze these up, put them on the bottom, and then crushed ice on top of that. Another thing to remember is that the air is your enemy. So that's why you really want to pack that cooler full. That helps with insulating everything in it. And once you get that cooler packed up, there's several things that you need to remember to help with that retention of the ice. Obviously, an enemy of the cooler and your food in the cooler when it begins to melt is that water. Nobody likes a soggy sandwich. So, you know, a cooler like Yeti here has these nice containers that you can use to keep your food up, elevated away from the ice. Another thing you can do, Tupperware, sealable Tupperware. Um, just keep those things in mind on things that you definitely want to stay completely dry. Another thing is keep your cooler out of direct sunlight. Keep it in the shade helps keep that cooler temperature down and it's going to help as well. Once that ice begins to melt, leave that water in there. As long as your food is in waterproof containers, you're good to go, but that water acts as an insulation. Another little trick that I like to do, especially when we're over in the Bahamas, ice is limited, is I like to freeze water bottles, freeze anything that I can have in that cooler that you know later in the day I want to drink, let's say waters. If I freeze all that the night before, it acts as ice, keeping the food cool, and at the same time, that drink is going to be ice cold. So just remember these basic tips when you're packing your cooler and have a much more enjoyable day on the water. All right, Dumars in Norfolk. All I hear about is this world's first cone machine. We're gonna go in and check it out though. It's a must when you come here apparently. So is that the draw to the place is the first cone? Yeah, so the draw to the place is the world's first cone machine. We've been in Norfolk since 1907. Secret recipe, kind of like a pancake waffle mix and you put it on the cast iron and these these two plates are heated up roughly the same temperature you want yeah, so you uh, seen it a couple times you want to try it one time I would love to right. what's the likelihood of me getting it right the first time oh uh, I would say maybe 18 <laughs> percent the second one's where I want to be so that's the easier right? one see if you can try it Let it cool. Yeah, let it cool. Let it, you gotta let it cool. Product. That's great. That's a good one. Pretty neat. It looks and sealed. And it's sealed. Up. It's great. <laughs> the finished product. Work out there in the heat, come in here and it's cool. So this is another thing we've been doing today, just all these channel markers. This giant, obviously, shipping channel with this, this naval port. So we're just going from, again, just structure to structure to structure, from buoy to buoy to buoy. And they, you know, you never know, they're whole fish or not, but we saw a couple of fish on this one, so. Big old paddle tail, twirly, twirly tail gulp. They like eels, so that's about as close as you can get to me. I got him. Got him on the go. <clears throat> These things eat it. They look just like an eel though, so it's perfect. Smaller one. I'm sure there's more down there. Look at them, look at them. Wow. This thing's crazy. <laughs> I got him on the go. <laughs> little baby one. 
This would be a good one at home. This is a baby here. Look at that. Perfect little guy. I'm gonna let him go. That's future fish right there. towards the end of the day but everybody's cleared out which is cool full sign which is extremely important and we're just going along checking piling went by this one and one's laying up and it's funny they just lay in the current nosed up like a trout in a stream so you just go along and you spot them i'm gonna try to get them on this twitch bait he should eat it doesn't matter can i pull him out of that i don't see him I'm just gonna yeah he's there i see him he's right off the side of that pole Oh, there he is. He's got him. You got him. All right, back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Going He's going in, though. He's going in. This is decent fish. I got him on the Twitch, babe. But I tell you what, he did not waste one second to eat that thing. Easy, easy, easy. Just one motor at a time. Might have you switch with me, George, if you can. Yeah. Nice good, good fish. fish. Decent fish. Like a shark down there. Give me a head lift. Oh. A lot of sharp points there, okay? Yeah. Oh, he's trying to jump. Oh. I got him on the twitch bait. Oh, and it fell out. And it fell out. Would that be a keeper? Oh, uh, you got Close. tape? He's close. Yeah, but well, we don't we don't need to keep another yeah, one. I'm probably... just curious. But look at that, a bunker style, twitch bait. You better bring some serious equipment out here to stop these fish. This 65 pound braid, Missouri braid, and that's what you need. Big 7500 size reel, just lock the drag down the new authority, man. So we brought out the heavy gear for this. Just and what you need. It just really reminds me of snook fishing at home, heavy structure. These fish are really tuned in on that truck and you got to pull them. Your dad yanked him out of there with the boat. That was important. I was thinking I had to go the other way. He told me to <laughs> shut up and pull them the right way. Center. It worked. Yep. It's like tarpon fishing in the Keys. Didn't hesitate on that twitch bait. Neutral a minute. There he went. How cool. Hey, thank you, brother. Absolutely. Good, Good work. Thanks, Good Dad. Job. Weather has completely changed, fronts come through, humidity's dropped, temperatures dropped, the wind has picked up. Obviously, it's gonna change the game plan for today. This area is also known for big redfish though. So, Absolutely. thinking something like that? Absolutely. That's the biggest rod in the boat. <laughs> oh, it makes the fight fun. That was my second cast. Is that right? One ounce go a jig head and a gulp paddle tail. Oh yeah! Oh my! That's a good fish right there. Oh <laughs> my! I didn't think he was that big. <laughs> that thing's a dinosaur. Look at that creature. Fifty years old, you're saying? Yep. Yeah. Baby! Yeah. So you come to Virginia Beach right there. <laughs>